In the last video, we arrived at an, at an expression for the scattering amplitude using the first born approximation. This is given by this equation over here. We're reintegrating over the range of the potential, so over the prime coordinates. There's two uh, particular cases that are often of uh, special interest. The first one is the low energy, or equivalently the long wavelength limit. This is the case when uh, the wavelength of the scattered particles or the incident particles, because we're looking at elastic scattering, is much greater than the range of the potential. So this A is what we're using to denote the extent of the potential for which we mean that for any position uh, further away than A, the potential is equal to zero. In that case, the complex exponential term over here, because we're integrating within the range of the potential, this doesn't vary very much. So it can be taken to be approximately equal to one. And the expression for the scattering amplitude simplifies to uh, an integral over the potential energy that's modeling our scattering target. So this is our expression for the scattering amplitude for the case of uh, a long wavelength relative to the extent of the potential. The second uh, special case is for a spherically symmetric potential or a central potential by which we mean that the potential energy is only a function of the radial distance rather than the entire position vector. In that case, the dot product between kappa and r prime would be given by the magnitude of kappa and magnitude of r prime times the cosine of the angle between these two vectors. The magnitude of kappa, we can find that by, again, considering our scattering process. And we had to find the kappa vector to be this vector over here, which was the difference between the scattered and the incident one. And this was an angle theta. If we bisect this angle, the line that bisects it arrives perpendicular to this vector from which we find that the magnitude of kappa is given by 2k sine theta over 2, where k is the magnitude of ki or equivalently the magnitude of ks because they both since it's, uh, we're looking at elastic scattering, they both have the same magnitude. This theta prime is, if we have the kappa vector over here and our prime over here, then this is the angle theta prime. In that case, so for a central potential, we know that the scattering amplitude only depends on theta in general because of spherical symmetry. The theta symmetry is broken by the incident particles. This is now VR prime without the vector, e to the minus kappa R prime cosine theta prime and the volume element in spherical coordinates.
Okay, so if we were to write out all the integrals, it says an integral with respect to phi, which will be trivial because no other uh, term here depends on phi. An integral, or it should be phi prime, an integral with respect to r prime. This would be r prime, r prime squared. And an integral So rather than expressing it as sine theta d theta, we're going to change the differential to d cosine theta. And that allows us to change the limits of integration from zero to pi to minus one to one. From here, we get a two pi. From here, we get a sine kappa r over kappa r prime. So that No. And this is from zero to infinity. And so this sine kappa r prime comes from, in part from this integral over here. And this is our expression for the scattering amplitude in the Born approximation for a central potential. So with these expressions now, with knowledge of the potential that we're using to model our scatterer, uh, we can more conveniently calculate the scattering amplitude in the cases where the Born approximation is valid.